Hey guys, Airsoft Al here, and my camera is really close. Excuse me a second, I'm just going to pick you guys up. Sorry ma'ams, I'm picking you up in an area that is technically your breast, so sorry for touching that. <clears throat> now, I want to welcome you guys to Airsoft Al's Guide to Airsofting. And this is part one of a three-part series. Part one is getting started. Now before getting started, I would have to say that you need the essentials. So the big factor is, you know, what are you getting into? How are you getting into it? And what have you. So you know what? I'm going to talk to you about my personal experiences of getting into airsoft. And it was pretty fun. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was really fun for me. Now, the first thing we got to talk about is this. How to get into airsoft. Well, for me, it was talking to a buddy. So there's the one criteria. One point number one. Talk to a friend who know, who's an airsofter or has been airsofting for a couple of years. And if he has extra guns and what have you, then let him do that. Number two. Well, I guess you could say it's number two, but outside of that, though, a big thing is this. What is your budget? And this budget number is technically a rough budget of what people have. So... Here's my budget from fifty to one hundred dollars. Fifty to one hundred dollars, you gotta do this. These are the guns within that range. Within this, you have the Mossberg five ninety Springer shotgun. It's a very good little shotgun. Has a hop up. Has some rail systems for any kind of optics you want in the future. It is a very good little CQB gun as well as some mid to long range uh, weapon. So this is definitely a good gun for the pick within the fifty to twenty dollar within the fifty to one hundred dollar range. Now the next gun is the United States Marine Corps SR01, and this little bad boy here, I can say for a damn fact, is definitely worth your money at forty five dollars because it comes with everything. Well, not everything you see here, but. It's definitely a good little PDW that definitely is worth the money and the price for admission because it definitely has a good hop up. It's a strong body. I've had this one for about five, for about, yeah, for about four plus years. Four plus years. I got this thing uh, way back when, before I went to college. And I'll tell you this now, it's a definitely good gun. And all the modifications you see on here are my own modifications and they're just there for uh, me alone. Okay? Okay. Now, if you're looking for a PDW standard rifle, then uh, for a standard gun, then I would go for the GSG 522. Outside of, you know, obviously the PDW there. This is a very good little gun. Very accurate, very matte. It's got a good distance of well beyond 105 uh, FT. And is very quiet, so... It's actually pretty quiet, and I like it. And the great thing is customization again. GSG definitely knows how to make their guns, and it's a definite comfortable gun and very good for what it is. At the price tag of about 40 bucks. Now, if you're looking for something within the $30 range, then look no further than the Cybergun FNL <clears throat> FN Scar L. And this thing here is actually pretty good. It's a sniper rifle, though it does not have a hop-up. It does come with a foregrip and a red dot sight. A little cheapy red dot sight. Cat, off the camera! You cannot play on my camera stand, kitty! I'm sorry, guys. Isis is just being a little... Well, tension wanting kitty. Now, the gun itself is mostly made out of plastic. But you know what? It's definitely good for the price tag of $30. So, yeah. Now, for $44.48, which is, again, near the $50 price range, I would go with the FAMAS by Cybergun, spring-powered rifle. This thing comes with a 45 round magazine. Son of a bitch. That I did not know was loaded. Damn it, Dustin. It's a very good gun, very 
good high quality plastic. Very accurate. Ah, very, very, very powerful. Okay, not powerful, but it is very accurate. And I was able to play, I've been able to play a lot of targets from a very good bit of range. And the full customization range is also amazing. So this is definitely a gun you want to check into. Here we go. Now, say you don't want a Springer right off the bat. You want an AEG. Well, for entry-level AEGs, I would recommend that you take it easy and take it slow. But if you want some companies that do sell AEGs for about $100 to about $80 that are high quality and very good, I'd recommend checking out these companies. I'd go with Umarex USA, JG, G&G, and e-bike. Okay, yes, I know e-bike's technically a wholesale company and they sell other products, but you get what I'm saying. Or, if you really want to go a little bit cheaper, I'd go with Black Ops Ignite. Uh, literally, just go with Black Ops Ignite. Black Ops Ignite. They are a great company. I love the company because they make really good, high-quality, uh, economy-friendly airsoft guns. I really do love them for what they do and what they make. They are amazing for the price tag. Especially their AKs. Well, technically, that's just me. I, I really do like an AK-47. Moving on. Now, say you don't have a price tag of $50 to $100. Well, it's a bit different. Now, if you have a price tag of $100, of $120 to $200, here's some gun, here are my picks for guns for entry-level airsofting. First up, the JG M16 Lily Poly Ready. Well, LiPo Ready, technically. This is a LiPo Ready M16, A3, and is a very good price tag for, was $120, but they shirked it back up to $140, to $140, which I thought was a bit bad. So, yeah, it's about right here, and is very good. 420 FPS with a .2, 300 round high cap, battery charger, and extremely accurate with a hop-up. I love this gun to death. However, it has kind of been replaced with my, with my uh, Famas, whatever. Now, <clears throat> say you're not looking for a rifle, you're looking for a shotgun. Well, this is where I can once again say this is a good gun to get. The Double Eagle Tri Shot Shotgun. Did he? Yep. Now, it does not come with this shell, it comes with a red shell, but. For fifty, for forty dollar, for forty four, forty eight, you can get this shotgun that comes with a speed loader, a sling, unjamming rod, and a shell. Now the shell's the magazine being thirty rounds, and the shotgun itself, like I said, is a tri shot shotgun, which means you have three barrels down that barrel that shoot out three pellets at about hundred feet or beyond hundred feet. I've been able to hit targets at roughly 102, 103. So it's a pretty good accurate gun. Yep. Okay, now, you've got your gun. You've got your, you know, you, you definitely do that. Now, what kind of BBs? No, well, before we get into ammunition, let's talk about sidearms. Now, you're looking for a sidearm, and you're saying, okay, what kind of pistol should I go with? These are my picks for very good entry-level pistols, but they're mostly Springers, so hear me out. Okay? Okay. Now, for a big one, if you're looking for max accuracy, and you know you're good at sharpshooting, well, not really sharpshooting because, you know, uh -uh. but uh, here are some guns I recommend. And yes, I know, Desert Eagle. This is the Cybergun Magnum Research Desert Eagle. It is a very good gun that holds about 100 rounds. Now, there's 80 rounds in the reservoir, 20 rounds in the main thing, in the main uh, tube. It has a working dual safety, fully ambidextrous. The hammer does lock back, which is very nice. And, so I don't load one in the chamber, it has an adjustable hop-up. This gun is actually pretty good for the price tag, and I'll admit now, I have been able to plank a lot of targets. That, and you can add a Picatinny rail here, and 
a scope, so it's very nice. It's a very good miniature sniper rifle, and I like it. I really do. For $20, you can get this, and it works very well. Hell, you can get the extra magazines for this gun. Granted, they're not speed loaders. They're regular U-shaped magazines, but still, a very good entry-level gun that has a hop-up in it. Very good. Very good gun. Now, second entry-level gun is this. I know. Sig Saucer P230 pocket pistol. Well, not really pocket pistol, but you get what I'm saying. It's a very good little gun and has a good distance of about 75 feet. And, believe me, it's very good to close in the gap and be able to pop, pop, pop. And it has a very smooth slide that I have ever seen. That one is a little bit... It's just a little bit inaccurate to some degree. Hmm. Now, the second entry-level gun is this. The Full Metal 1911. Now, UTG makes a Full Metal 1911, which is pretty good, and it comes with real wood side paneling, which I, I'm probably going to get. But this is made by Game Face, which is actually made by KWC. Love you guys. And I actually like it. It's a very accurate gun. It's very realistic, and it actually takes apart like a real 1911. You just pull it back, push back on this, and, uh, you know, I got a full breakdown video. Just look for that. And it comes with a very decent plastic magazine. Now, the gun itself is all metal, so you're going to get the weight of a 1911, and it's very, very powerful. Well, not really powerful. It shoots about 280 FPS, which is something you need for CQB. It has a working grip safety, hammer, what have you. It's very good for if you want to actually get a gas blowback CO2 1911. Continuing on. Now, I know this is a bit of a, a thing, but just hear me out. My Black Ops Ignite 1911. Yeah, you knew this was coming. For $20, you can get this. Or for $45, you can get the Combat Pack, which comes with two of these bad boys, two magazines, Two 400 round bottles, which you can dump out the point two, uh, point .12s and put it in .2s. I'll get into that later. And it's just accurate as almighty hell. And fires at 380 FPS because it has an AEG spring in this bad boy. Holy shit. That's pretty damn powerful. This is a powerful gun. And the hammer does lock back. Now this is technical. Now this is a hot gun, so I'm not going to obviously pull the trigger. But I will admit, it does take apart the same way. You basically pop that out, pop that, 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 that. Again, 1911 breakdown video. Now, the gun's light, it's made of plastic, and you can pull it out pretty quick and fire. Just like that. You can basically go, eh, eh, oh. Done. And it's pretty damn accurate firing up to about 100 feet. I've been able to get a target at roughly 105 feet or even further. I just haven't measured the distance yet, but it is a very accurate gun. It has a very good, healthy distance on it. So, yeah. All right, now that you've got your guns, what about protection? Eye protection, face protection. What do you want to protect? Well, here's some, here's some advice for you. The first go around, go with a full face paintball mask, because believe me, a lot of these guns are firing at 420 FPS. Anywhere from 400 to 500 FPS, or even 480. So depending on the field rules, you're going to get a shot in the face a lot. Because believe me, I've been shot in the face before, and it ain't fun. Well, then again, I have my paintball mask on, so I'm kind of safe there. But even so, my recommendation, go for a full face paintball mask. Do not take the risk, your first rodeo, okay? And I believe a lot of you can agree with me that our first rodeo in Airsoft, we took a lot of risk. I remember my first year. I wore this thing religiously. Okay, not this one in particular, but you get what I'm saying. I wore a full face paintball mask religiously until I got used until I got some ballistic glasses and I got a helmet with a butt with a pop down visor. That's gonna be another video for another time. Now after we got through that, another thing is this. Did you save for the essentials? Obviously face protection. Batteries, and I'm talking lipos, obviously, extra batteries. Uh, BBs, which BBs, I'm going to go ahead and get into this. When we're talking about BBs, we're talking about 0.2 gram BBs, which are technically 0.20 gram. These are half a gram BBs, and believe me, it may not sound much to those who have no idea what that, but 
It does. It makes a fucking difference. Now, if you live in an area with a Walmart, then you've probably seen these. These are 0.2 gram, 10,000 BBs offered by Black Ops Ignite. And I would recommend getting these bad boys as much as possible because 20 bucks for 10,000? Not bad. Now, outside of that, I also have this. Metal Tac 0.2 BBs. I have a lot of 0.2s, guys. I'm about to get me some 0.25s real soon. But you get what I'm saying, okay? Okay? Okay. Now, another thing is this. The next video... Well, my bad. I was about to say the next video. Huh? The thing is this. I know a lot of people are cocky. Believe me. I was cocky myself when I started airsofting at age 12. But, I'm 21 now. I've been 21 for a while. And looking back on my younger self during air, when I airsoft, I was a little bastard. I mean, I was a cocky son of a bitch. And I'll say this now. From personal experience, don't automatically be that gung-ho guy that always runs out first. Be cautious. Because believe me, I didn't and I got fucked up. Now, granted, when my friends started telling me, you know, slow it down, take your time, I did. And I'll say this now, it's actually pretty good. Again, looking back on it now, yeah, I have to say it, being cocky doesn't win you a lot. Being calm and collected, yeah, that'll get you a lot of wins. Believe me, it will. But outside of that, though, here's my advice to you, okay? Take it slow. Don't automatically go buying the biggest expensive gun you can. Don't be that guy who has to have the next big thing, who has to have compensation for firepower. Don't be that guy who just buys up the most expensive thing out there and gets mad because it's not working for him. It's because you're not ready for it. Believe me, I, five years of my life, five years, before I even bought a dual-powered AK, five years, and my first actual legitimate AEG was the M16 here. That was before I was ready. Well, again, five years after that, it was fine. You get what I'm saying, though, guys. We take our time before we buy a gun. Well, I do, anyway. Before I buy a gun, I look at everything. I'm talking what ball bearings does it have, what type of gears does it have, full metal gearbox, MOSFET, hop-up. I look at every single aspect of the gun, and right down to the goddamn materials, to say, okay, I'm ready to buy this gun. Hell, before I even bought my FAMAS and my shot, grant it was a Christmas gift, but you get what I'm saying. Before I even asked for them for Christmas, I looked at every single aspect. And when I went to Gatlinburg last year, I actually got to hold some of them. And I got to feel them. And I got to say, okay, I'm cool with it. I'm all right with it. As such, I leave you with this. Be the cautious type. Don't be the hyperactive type that has to have the next best thing. Because believe me, I was like that. And I lost a $300 gun because I broke it. Well, it broke my fall, but still. Just take my example and don't automatically jump before you look. Look before you leap. Just take some time and look around. Okay? Okay. Thank you guys for watching this gear guide, uh, well, starter guide to airsofting. Part 2 will be coming in soon, and then part 3 will be the finale. Unless you guys want more, then I'm happy to give it to you. Until next time, guys.